I feel like I need to scratch him. Scrouch? Scrunch. Brad here. Brad here. Tall Brad here. Short Rach here. That is very true. <laughs> the kids like to point out who's big and who's little. And so they say, Eloise is little. She's our five month old baby. And then they say that each other's little. They're twin two year olds. And then they say daddy's big. Mm -hmm. And then most, I'm always big. most of the time they say I'm little. <laughs> <laughs> They're not wrong. Well, I'm big. I say, what about compared to Eloise? And then they'll say, mommy big. Tonight's vlog, how would you describe it? I think we should take a look outside our walls. This is not a vlog. Tonight's video. Tonight's video. Hey, Iris. Welcome. Okay. I would like to spend some time looking outside our walls. I feel like we can get really myopic. Myopic meaning nearsighted. I, I especially, because we have three small children and I tend to like hone in on our family and forget about what's happening in the grand scheme of things. Mm -hmm. And this is a really great opportunity to, some, like we've mentioned several times that this particular quarantine, self-isolation type thing is not so bad for us. Yeah, even though I'm working harder being at home as opposed to being at work, it's still a staycation for us. And he doesn't just mean with the kids, he's having to do a lot of Navy stuff. Is that accurate? Yes, a it lot is. Of, like paperwork mm -hmm. type stuff? Yeah, just accountability and stuff like that. So we wanna recognize everybody else out there who, I mean, this could just be- A nightmare. Probably one of the biggest burdens of your entire life. Mm -hmm. So we kinda wanna brainstorm with you guys about just like how this, who this is affecting, how. Potentially, like how we could help those that this is affecting the most. Like as a community or mm -hmm. us individually? Both. Mm, okay. Both. I don't know of any ways to help currently. I don't know who to donate to. I don't know who to. Well, we don't have a ton of money. I mean, we have enough to get us by. Right. Um, so it's not like we can just give out money. No, but I also feel like we're not in a position where we're going to go hungry, which that's, I would say maybe our first group of people that we could talk about is liter quite literally by not going to work for two weeks. Plus there are families that will not be able to buy food. Mm -hmm. And I was reading today, you know, about like the stimulus package and, and like the government giving individuals a thousand dollars. Even that check, like if that does pass and they're really going to do that, it could take three weeks. Before it at the sh like at the shortest. Wow. So I mean, how is that helping? I guess if this thing does last a month or six weeks, yeah, which I weeks feel like it help. will, I feel like this is more than a two week thing. So yeah, that would be probably at the top of the list is people who literally cannot make ends meet without working, and if they're in a position where they cannot work, then that's a problem. Yeah, hopefully they can file unemployment mm -hmm. and at least get something. I feel like the paperwork though to do that would be lengthy. Oh yeah, sure. And the wait time and whatever else might push that out at least three weeks. Yeah, hopefully the government is <clears throat> pushing everybody to the top of the list. Right. That needs to be. The next category of people that I feel like are tremendously affected by this are women who are close to giving birth or have given birth and can't have any family at all visit them in the hospital to meet their new baby. So Rachel said maybe even in <clears throat> the husband's part? I'm not sure on that. I just read something that talked about a woman checking in to give birth by herself. Yeah, I just can't imagine that that's the case. I don't so know. So if you know, if you or a family member or some of that you know personally, not just something that you read on the internet, right? the husband wasn't allowed to go in, <laughs> please let us know. Yeah, I just, I don't know. I don't that know. would be crazy. It would be crazy, but it also might be necessary. That's one less person that's potentially exposing people. Yep. We had a, a bit of a reality check this week because we figured out that we are one degree of separation away from somebody who has coronavirus, and we have been in contact with the person that separates us. So, 
we're all just like kind of waiting. Do you feel like you need to cough in your... <laughs> exactly. Mm -hmm. But like hold it in. Right. Yeah. We're all just kind of waiting to see if that is a reality, which I hope it's not. The thing is in our area, they're not even testing people. That's the problem I would say is that in so, our area, they're not even testing people. So. Right. But enough about that. Yeah. Who else would this I seriously would... affect? Cause like not so serious would be just like pushing back your wedding, pushing back vacation. I wouldn't even say that's not so serious. That would feel very, very serious if it were our wedding that we were having to totally reschedule. Yeah. But think, uh, yeah. In the grand it, scheme of things, that's exactly. maybe not that big of a deal, but no. that would be really, really sad for some people. Especially if you like made deposits that you can't get back. Yes. Vacations that you'd planned that you can't go on, things like that to that effect. We've experienced that with the bombings in Paris. Mm -hmm. We couldn't go on our European vacation. Seems like sort of a first world problem. Totally. Let's take it back down to like even more depressing than that. People who, n children or spouses that are in an abusive home. Yeah. Can you imagine? Maybe a kid that school was like their only escape mm -hmm. to get away and they don't have school even anymore. Yeah. What a downer, honey. I know. Well, I mean, that's stuff that we got to think about. Mm -hmm. Totally. So, and the same with like spouses who can't go anywhere or find reprieve from that situation that they're in. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to help in that situation. I don't know. Like, yeah, exactly. Just in our last video, we were talking about how we didn't want to make this like a depressing topic. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Well, should we turn it around and... Let's maybe turn it around. So I did read something yesterday that was really incur... Oh, I, I thought of another one. Um, and this is our friend Amy from Ireland said... She sent us a text message and said that there are small businesses that are shutting their doors to just help contain this virus. Shutting their doors knowing that they may never open them again. Um, oh, I thought you were going happy. No. I thought of one more, I thought of one more sad thing. How is that happy? But. <laughs> but maybe they really hate their business. <laughs> <laughs> okay, hold on, do you want to pause the video and I'll try to pull up. <laughs> okay, I found what I was looking for and it is very, very positive and it, it really encourages us to look ahead so we can look back on the positives of this. Okay, go ahead. I can't wait for a year's time when all this is a distant memory and there's a corona baby boom because all lovers were loving. And there's a rise in small business because all entrepreneurs had a moment of stillness and creativity. And all the children remember nothing but a time when all the mums and dads were at home drawing and playing board games and we remember it as the times we got to stop and be present. We will remember the time our health was our first priority and people learned new ways to use fresh products to feed their families and we were all forced to think outside the box and dream up new things and reinvent old ways and for once, even amongst the chaos, there was community. There was a global rise in togetherness and streets were quiet, but our homes were bustling with love and laughter. That time is coming soon, just like other crises before. This will all be a distance memory. A thing we soon listen to our children discuss in classrooms, a once was, that we share with our grandbabies. So to you, I know it's unsettling, but focus on the silver lining. We are in this together, and there's so much beauty to see. That's pretty, pretty Isn't it? Okay. That's really great. I feel like that really helped bring things back up again. Don't you? I do. And then there's this guy surfing with a mask on. And then there's that. There he is. Look at that guy. It's a great picture. Just in case there's corona in the ocean. Yeah. So. Can't be too safe. Not to be a downer with this entire video, but to maybe think outside our four walls. And no matter how bad you feel like this is, there's probably somebody that has it worse and there's probably something to be thankful for in all of this. So, I mean, did you think about something that we could do? No, but I'm hoping Besides that- Besides put out great content? I'm hoping you guys will help us with that. You know, I haven't done a ton of research to figure out what we can do or who we can help, but, oh, another, I Well, I know about, we can help by staying the hell home. Exactly, that's one thing we can do, and that's what I've been trying to do. That's really all I've known to do. 
grocery store workers, truck drivers, your parents are still out there mm -hmm. delivering goods. Mm -hmm. But grocery store workers can't stop working. Healthcare workers that are, you know, like, the, is there some way that we can support the people who are working through this? I'm sure some people are jealous of the people that can work through this. Yeah, no kidding. But they're exposing themselves and their families. I heard of an ER doc who was going to the ER every day treating COVID patients and then sleeping and quarantining himself in his garage of his home because he didn't want to expose his wife and his, I think it was like three week old baby. Oh yeah. So he just slept in his garage. Yeah, it's tough. I know. So if you know of any, any way you can add to this video of people that we should be praying for or any ways that we can help, uh, let's get this message out and start spreading, you know, thoughts of other people besides woe is me, I'm stuck at home with my annoying, really loud toddlers. <laughs> <laughs> I love my toddlers. We do. Very much. Yes. And they love us. Mm -hmm. They tell us all the time. Mm -hmm. Well, Lendl does. Yeah. Hey, Iris. All right, well, hit that subscribe button. We're going to try to bring great content every day. We're going to try. If you have any ideas for what we can talk about every single day, let us know. All right. <laughs> good night. Bye. Maybe good night. Have a great day.